Hi there, and welcome to your Race Advisor Pro Members Area training videos. In this video, I'm going to show you a quick start guide to analyzing a race using the Race Advisor Pro software. I recommend that you go through all of the other training videos, which will explain all of the features and the settings inside your software in detail. However, to get started quickly, you can use this method. And if you've got any questions, please post in the forum. First of all, we've got to choose a race. And I recommend choosing races with a smaller number of horses, maybe between 5 and 8 or 5 and 10. And races which are on good, good to firm, firm, or all-weather ground. There are less variables in them, and they're quicker to analyze. If you can find a sprint race, that is also beneficial, but we're not so worried about the distance. I'm going to choose the Kempton 330. Also, I would suggest you don't choose any races that are maidens or novices, or are filled with unraced horses. Start with handicap races with experienced runners. So we click on the race to open that race card. And we can see by default we have the standard race card. I strongly suggest that you watch the other videos to know exactly how to create your own race card. First of all, we're going to come along here to our PR odds column, and I'm going to sort that in order from the lowest odds to the best odds. And these are our predicted odds, and we're suggesting that Tommy Silver and Exodus are gonna be the two best, and they are currently both highlighted green, which means they're offering value. We then come to the VDW odds column, and we can also see here that Tommy Silver and Exodus are two out of the four horses highlighted as the strongest from the VDW odds perspective as well. So these two are already looking quite good. Moving over, we can see that the Betfair odds, Tommy Silver is currently the favorite. However, Exitas is the outsider. Interestingly, Tommy Silver's odds have drifted over the last five minutes and Exitas have shortened. But we're not gonna look into that too much at the moment. I'm gonna keep coming across, but I'm gonna first click on each of those horses to highlight them as possible contenders. Now I'm going to sort by the RR column and see where our horses stand. And this gives us a very different picture. Exodus is now at the top and Tommy Silver has moved quite a way down, which isn't what we were going to expect. So that is quite interesting and the RR column gives us a quick overview of all of the factors on our race card. We're going to keep going through and I'm going to keep them highlighted for the moment. Because we're now going to come to the 5278 column. This rating, um, the horses that are ranked 1 to 4 are going to win between 52 and 78% of the time. And you can see that by hovering over the column header, you get the details of exactly what that column is. Now we can see that Exodus is outside of this, while Tommy Silver is ranked number 1, which is expected and that would tie in with our low odds prediction as well as being favourite in the market. It's starting to give us a bit of concern over Exodus, despite having one of the lowest RR scores. And the Reynolds ranking, the RR score, the better the, the horse, the lower the number. However, ratings and factors are always estimates. Uh, they're not always correct, which is why we need to use a number of them to come up with an overall picture of the horses in the race. So for the moment, I'm just going to click on that horse to remove it. So at the moment, Tommy Silver is our most interested horse. We have concern over Beau de Brise because the odds are very high. But we're going to keep moving along our DSLGR. This is the number of days since the horse had a good race. Now, I'm going to remove the horses that are have a long time since a good race. More than six months is a concern. So we can see here, the Marquis of Carabas has had 297 days since a good race. I'm just going to click on that X to remove the horse from our contenders list. Exitas is right on that edge at 190. So it has had just over six months without a good race, which is cause for concern, but it's only a few days over the six months, 
So I'm just gonna leave it there for the time being, especially considering it came up on our PR odd as the second best. The PFP is a form rating and we're gonna use the PFP and the PFP L95 together. I'm not gonna explain what these factors mean. Um, you can hover over like this and see exactly what it is. I'm just gonna explain here how I'm gonna use it to analyze the race. I'm gonna start by sorting PFP L95 uh, from best uh, from lowest to highest. The higher the score, the better. What I'm interested in is the highest score here, 1508. Any horse that doesn't have a PFP of at least 1508, I'm going to remove. And we can see that in this race, they all do, although Lord Brian is very, very close, and that gives me cause for concern about this horse. However, I'm gonna leave it in because it does have that score there that matches that. Any horse that has a lower score than 1508, a lower PFP than 1508, I would have removed. However, in this race, we can see that they're all there, and the one horse that does have a lower PFP than 1508 has already been eliminated. Next, I'm going to sort the field by the rank speed figure from the last race, and this has been adjusted for today's race. We can see that Lord Brian is expected to be the fastest. However, taking into account the distance of this race, which is three miles, the fastest horse is not necessarily the best. It is likely to burn itself out. We can see that Tommy Silver is the lowest rated based on speed figure alone but we have to again take into account the distance. Speed regression angle. A positive figure indicates a horse improving. A negative finger figure indicates a horse declining from a speed figure perspective. Again, this race being over three miles, speed isn't going to be um, the primary factor. Uh, form, such as the 5278, Days since last good race and the PFP numbers are going to be more important than speed in this race. However, it would indicate that this horse has been declining in speed. And we'll come back in a minute to have a look at this in a bit more detail. The reason the PR odds are going to be lower here, even though the horse is declining in speed, is that this uses artificial intelligence to calculate the odds using factors that are most suitable to the race and it's almost certainly going to have used more form than speed in this race because of the distance. Scrolling over, we have this projected class here, class rating here, which is based on prize money. So the higher the figure, the better. And we can see that Exitas is at the top again. Um, and Tommy Silver is down with Lord Brian in the middle. You'll have noticed that we've had pretty much no positives so far for Beau de Brise. It's not had many negatives, it's just sitting there with very little positives. We sort next by the rank win horse, and it's done all the time decay. And again, this shows um, the horses that rank best for their winning history. So which have the best winning history from the field, and Tommy Silver is back up at the top, Whereas Exitas is back down at the bottom. Lord Brian again in the middle, as is Beau de Brise. Finally, we have the contender factor here. Um, and this is going to show us how likely we think the condition of the horse is in the race. So this condition, the higher the score, the better the horse's condition. And again, there's very little difference between them. So having gone through all these factors, I'm going to happily remove Beau de Brise because there was nothing positive, nothing particularly negative. It was average, sat in the middle of the field, um, which is what the odds suggest. Lord Brian was the similar, it had a couple of positives, but nothing huge stood out. So again, I'm going to remove this horse. The strongest horse looks to be Tommy Silver. Um, had the most positives and the least negatives. It's the favourite in the market, but it is offering value based on our PR odds column. 
If I unclick the horse, you can see that the PR odds column is green, showing the odds are offering potential value. There was a bit concern over the speed in the race, so I'm going to click on the horse's name and have a quick look at its history. We can see here it won a race three miles on the 25th of April. Um, so that's a good start. Coming further down, it won a race at two miles seven furlongs on the 28th of February. Um, moving down again, we can see it came second in a two mile race on the 26th of November at Kempton. So it likes Kempton. There's three we've seen there immediately. Um, and I'm just going to click on the race card here to have a quick look at its scores in previous races. Um, so the last race that it won at, again, was at the top. It had a good prize money here, but the speed regression was neither up nor down. Coming back to the form, what we can see here is that the horse has started at one mile seven furlongs, then come into two mile races, and the distance has slowly got longer over time. And that is likely to indicate why this speed regression is decreasing. Because the horse is the distance it's racing is getting longer, the horse is needing to get slower to win. We can also, if we want to have a look at pace, have a look at pace here. It's predicted to be fast, and the leading horses are likely to burn out and not finish in a position. Which comes back to what we were saying, where distance is very important to consider when you're talking about the speed factors and the form factors, and about how much importance to put to each. Because this race is three miles, um, we would want to put more importance over the form than the speed just taking into account the speed and where there might be a concern looking at the horse's history to determine which it is. We're left with these two horses here and we can also see this is a course and distance winner over the same distance at this course. The star means that the horse is a course and distance winner over this uh, same distance at the course. If it wasn't a star it would just say it was a course winner and a distance winner, not necessarily at the same track. We can see that Exitas is a course winner. Um, so with that information together, I will add Tommy Silver as a selections to my selections list. I'm going to take him uh, whatever the odds because the odds are currently offering value and there's no point in doing him except as a back bet. So I would add him as a back bet. Once he's added, I'm going to add Exitas by simply clicking on the horse's name and go to selections. This horse has potential. The odds are up and down a little bit, um, but we think it has possible place potential. I'm gonna add this as a potential place met, but for a much lower stake of possibly five. Exitas is a bit on the fence here for a bet, um, but I, I believe it has some potential with the strongest bet being Tommy Silver. So that is a way of quickly analyzing a race um, using the standard race card and some of the features in your software. Use this, watch this video again, go through it, you go through each of the factors in order, um, analyzing how they fit with the other horses in the race. I recommend starting in races with smaller numbers of runners over good, good to firm, firm or standard race conditions. Take into account the distance of the race to determine how important speed or form are going to be. And then narrow your number of runners down by eliminating horses until you're left with just between one and three horses in a race. Always remember there are very few races where a single horse is the only horse with a chance. You can always expect to have one to three or possibly four horses. If you have more than three horses that you consider have a good chance of winning the race, I would recommend passing on that race and moving on to another one. And then choose how you're going to bet on those horses from your analysis. If you've got any questions, please post in the forum. Uh, we will get involved in the conversation, as will other members, and help you get to grips with this quick approach. Please do watch all of the other 
videos in our training section that are very important in understanding how to use the software. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you.